I'm glad you're back. Welcome back to DIY Like a Pro. I'm Sam, and today we're actually going to be talking about what we can do with a walking stick. I actually I found this when I was um, hiking. Uh, if you've seen the last video, it was a um, a little trip we did to a friend's cottage and for a possible scouting location for um, some work and. I really like this stick. I don't know if you can see exactly all the uh, nature of this stick, but um, I really liked it. And so I was thinking, what should I do with this stick? And um, there's a lot of different things we can do with it, but today what I think we're going to do is we're going to sand it down, we're going to give it a coat of urethane and then we're going to paracord wrap it. So for those of you that don't know what paracord is, it is parachute cord, paracord. So this is exactly what it is. And so you can make all kinds of things out of it. You can make wraps for, um, you know, for the walking stick, like what I'm going to show you how to do. You can make bracelets. Uh, a lot of people make the survival bracelets where it has um, you know, hidden stuff inside where it's got, um, you know, like this one here has got a compass and it's got some, uh, like a fire starter and stuff and some fishing line and hooks and stuff in it. So, um, you can make a lot of cool things with it. Um, the army uses it as kind of, um, I guess like manly gimp and, uh, it kind of serves a, a double purpose. So like if you, um, if you did get lost in the bush, then you'd have some rope with you to start. Um, I'm just going to show you what we're using and then we'll start by um, and then I'll take off all my jewelry and stuff that I don't want to ruin during this project because we will be sanding. Let me just get this stuff out of the way. Okay, so um, we've got the paracord, a stick. Um, I've actually got some Romex here um, that we're just going to use to actually string this up so that we can urethane it evenly. Wow, it's hot in here. You can have whatever you like to apply your urethane with. So whether it's a foam brush or a bristle brush, you can pick these all up at regular hardware stores. Um, bristle brushes are normally the cheap disposable ones that are better for applying finishes. And um, they're great because they're usually cheap and you can throw them away if you don't feel like cleaning them. Then I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife, a flathead screwdriver, or in this case, I'm just using it to open my can. Any urethane that you like. So I'm using a, um, a semi-gloss because that's the finish I want. And I like using the oil base because it's a little bit thicker, a little bit more durable. Some side cutters, Phillips screwdriver, one screw, of course, sandpaper. So um, you can use any kind of sandpaper you like. Um, this is one that I just happen to have but um, it's one I really like to use, which is your 220 grit. Um, it's also supposed to be one of those fancy sands faster ones, and some rags. For this project, I'm also gonna be using a bottle of water. And when you're working with any sanding projects, it's always good to have water uh, around. This is actually water that's been sitting on my workbench for a good chunk of time. And the reason for that is that if you're working with um, with sanding stuff, then it's good to either take a cheesecloth or a wet rag and wipe everything down before you're ready to apply your finish. As well as um, if you're working with glue, it's great for um, for cleaning up any excess glue. All right, let's get this thing started. So we're gonna start with some sandpaper. For those of you that aren't as familiar with sandpaper, you always just want to fold it up a couple times to make it easier and more manageable to use. But at the same time, it's nice because then you can unfold it just kind of like a, a cloth or anything and then use the other side that you haven't used already. So what I've already done is um, because I was using this in the bush and it had, it was still a piece of tree, I cut off all of the protrusions and any um, little pieces of branches or anything that were growing out of the side of this. And um, I did also cut it down to size. So it's a little bit shorter than it was originally. So if you are planning on doing this project, make sure that you have a good piece of wood that is um, good for the project that you're planning on doing. So once you've got um, this all cleaned up, you can just use a knife 
and um, just clean up anything that is sticking out. So essentially what I did was just went over anything that was sticking out. Um, any little sharp spots, you don't want to catch yourself on anything. Um, so once you've done that, which I've already done, then we're just going to fold up this sandpaper. And then we're just going to sand the area because I don't want it to be, right now it's kind of covered in a pre-barked finish and a dirt finish from being in the dirt. So um, after I took all the bark off of it, um, it's still just dirty. So I'm just gonna kind of clean it up so that it has a nice finish because I'm not staining it. It is hot in here. My shop does not have AC and fans and other stuff like that, heating, especially in the winter, all make a lot of humming noises and stuff, so very hard to uh, keep this climate controlled. But we have water. For the next step, we're just gonna grab our rag and pour some water on here and just get it all over the table, everywhere. <laughs> then you're just gonna wipe down your walking stick. So when you get it to where you like it, that's where you need to sand it to. If you like it with bark on it, and you like that live edge or anything like that, then, I mean, this is gonna be your baby, so you do what you want with it. So now we're just gonna wipe it all down. And what this actually does, by wiping it down with a wet rag, it actually helps to um, allow the wood to liven up a bit, just wake it up and be able to hang on some of the stain if you're going to stain it or any like wood glue or um, any other finishes as well. So um, it does two things obviously, it helps to bond to you know whatever finish you're putting on just because you're taking the dust off but it actually does something for the wood itself. This has actually got some cool patterning on it. I think it's got some uh, like carpenter ant and um, you know and uh, different kind of animal uh, wear on it. So it's actually got a cool kind of a pattern on this. So again, once you get it to where you like it, then you're good to go. So we can see it's starting to uh, to dry out pretty good. So now. What we're going to do is just pop one screw in the bottom. The reason I'm going to use the bottom is I don't have to repair it. So um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with the bottom of the actual walking stick. I did re I did realize that it is starting to show some wear just from smacking it on the ground and you know um, on concrete and stuff like that. It is starting to show some wear, and I can get a little rubber foot or something like you'd have on a cane for the bottom. But um, since I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with it. Um, I know that even if it is kept as just wood, that um, I can eventually sand it down and finish it again. But what we're going to do is we're just going to put in the screw on the bottom so that we can suspend this from the ceiling. That way you don't have to do it in the top and then have to have a repair on the top. Because this is supposed to be natural, so no wood filler on this project. Those of you people that like to use wood filler or out and stuff like that. No. So I'm just using a drywall screw um, just because you don't have to use a drywall screw. You can use any kind of screw you like. So we're just going to get, get that over there. I'm just going to, because I'm using Romex, I'm just using whatever I have around here. So um, for most of these projects that I do, I'm not actually using something that I have to go out and buy, which is nice because um, projects get expensive otherwise. 
So I'm just going to separate a piece. Uh, it doesn't have to be the piece of copper, bare copper if you like it. Um, I find that the one with the jacket still on it is a little bit more um, durable. It tends to uh, hold a little bit better. So I'm just going to wrap this so we can suspend it. And now I've got to find something to suspend this to. I prefer when I'm doing urethaning, um, for some reason I'm not sure why, but I prefer the, the foam brush to um, the other options out there. You can also use a rag, just dip the rag, wipe it down, um, but it gives it a little bit more of a liberal coat if you do um, it with a, a brush or a foam brush. So we're just going to apply to anywhere that we can reach right now. And just spin this around. So because we're going to hang this from the ceiling, I'm not going to be able to reach the entire thing. So we're going to start with the part that's going to be hanging higher first, and then we're going to hang it. And then once we're once we've got it hung, then we can do the bottom. Just because we don't want to get any weird marks on this. If it was square, then, or at least even even shaped, then we could probably do it a different way. But in this case, we're just going to go gradually. And we'll get a couple coats of this on. If you hold it in the light, you can see if you missed any spots. So now that you've got your stick done, we're just going to close this up for a little bit until it's time for a second coat. And uh, so just let this dry. It is drying upside down so that um, in case it drips or anything, it will be even. And um, we'll be right back once this dries. Uh, if you use a water base, it'll take about, um, it can take an hour or a couple hours to um, to dry. If you're using an oil base like this, sometimes it takes up to eight hours to dry. If it does take eight hours, then find something else to do for eight hours and then come back and stick another coat on. And when this is dry, then we'll be back and I'll show you how, I'm not gonna show you how to put the second coat on, but when this, when this is all done, I'll show you how to put the paracord on it and make it look cool right back.